1914, workers in Oberkassel, Germany made a discovery that sets the scene of an incredible relationship. One that began long ago. Before the dawn of modern technology. Before Europeans landed in the Americas. Before the Roman Empire. Even predating the Great Pyramids of Egypt. They discovered the grave of two people. One man and one woman. But they weren't buried alone. Laid to rest next to them was one other. A dog. Buried side by side with humans. 14,000 years ago. Homo sapiens and Canis familiaris. Humans and dogs. Throughout history, our species have been intertwined, immortalized in art and writing since the dawn of civilization. Dogs have been at our side. They are guardians, allies in battle. They are protectors, tending the herd. Companions to adventurers and explorers. Partners to the sportsmen and protectors to those at home. To many, their family. Near the end of the 19th century, they gained a new purpose when the detectives of Scotland Yard used bloodhounds to track the infamous killer, Jack the Ripper. They quickly became a staple of law enforcement, forming a bond with their handler and working together as a team. By the 1960s, canine units were established in police departments across the world. average member of the public, a police dog, is a dog that catches bad guys. Uh, he's a dog who finds drugs. He's a dog who finds lost people. But a police dog, in the public's understanding, is a dog that's trained to perform certain functions of law enforcement that either human officers are incapable of performing or that the dog can perform more efficiently than the human officer. If you combine all of the things that encompass a working dog from what for what we want for example I'm not going to go into each particular breed but you take all the things that athletes in certain sports would have they have the speed and the quickness they have um, the ability to focus um, you see dogs that have this amazing physical ability to run fast to jump over things and concentrate and at the same time be able to cap and control themselves and perform the task at hand, no matter what the distractions are around them. But just, just the fact that they can do all these things, um, to me, is amazing. It's really amazing, um, and that they can channel. And that's where the training comes in, and that you have an animal that can do that. There's a lot of animals out here that can only do one or two of those things, not all of them, and that's the great thing about them. They're unique. ask quite a bit what our dogs are capable of doing. Um, but I guess the question that doesn't get asked a lot is what do they do for the community, right? I, people don't really ask that question. They come there, they see the dogs, they see how social they are, they see what they can do, but we never get asked that question. Well, what do they do for us? Well, it brings security to the community, um, protection, and, and it brings, a, a, like I said, a great asset for every police department. And for a department that doesn't have a canine, um, especially a, a department our size, uh, they're missing out, in, in my opinion. They're missing out on the ability to have one. 
People like security. People likes it. You know, we get uh, law enforcement that uh, show up at, let's say, uh, home invasion. Um, okay, you come out of your house and you go, okay, man, we got eight cars here, you know, to look for this individual that broke into a house. When the canine shows up, you go, oh, man, action's going to happen now. For our city, it was very important that the canines we got were able to not only find bad guys and drugs, but also go into schools and let kids pet the dogs and meet the dogs and, and interact with them. So it was kind of to find that even keeled temperament, you know, is something that we were striving to get. Rook and all the search dogs that were there provided closure for those individuals that needed it at that time. And I wouldn't change it one bit, you know what I mean? Because he did his job. Those, a lot of times, those dogs were the unsung heroes. They were there doing their jobs both that way, at least I know my dog did, because he was a registered therapy dog, and also search dog for, for the department. I mean, we were assigned, you know, we full utility police dog. They are an amazing animal, an absolutely amazing animal, and their abilities, I still think you could find the best dog trainer in the world, and if you asked he or she the question, do you think that we've tapped their entire resources, they would tell you no. No, because we're limited on what we know and what we do, and what our thought processes are. So I, I think that uh, if they were honest with you, they'd, they'd, they'd tell you no. We haven't, we've maybe scratched the surface on it. It's amazing what we can teach them and what they can retain, and retain for years and years and years. Um, that's the amazing thing. Um, so yeah, police dog is sort of a, a conglomerate of a bunch of different things that, that this dog can do, and do them well. Um, and that's the great thing for us, it really is. They selected me when they called down to Erie. The guy that was on the desk, uh, Jack Ebley was on desk, and uh, the major asked him who he had for a, a, make a good dog handler. And he said, I got just the guy for you. My dog, a beagle at that time, had pups, and that was the talk of the post. So uh, I wound up going in for an interview in front of the major, and two weeks later, I was on my way to St. Louis with an all-black German Shepherd. And uh, of course, Jack Ebley was the one that volunteered me. And uh, so we named the dog Jocko after uh, Jack Ebley and uh, the doggo name. And it worked out all right, except that more people remember my dog than they do me. I played second fiddle to that thing. Everybody wants to meet the dog. Everybody wants to see the dog. I'll walk into a room, they didn't even acknowledge me. How's your dog? How's Worf? You know, how's Deacon? Uh, that's what I always got. So it really increased my uh, ability to work in the community and, and give police a better image, especially going to schools. Uh, really, I think, made a, a huge difference on, on both me and the people I was bringing my dog to because the social media is so different nowadays from you know, 15 to 20 years ago. And that he's got his own Facebook page, so the kids love him, the kids know him. When they see him, they come around and they, they want to pet him. Um, so it's, it's more or less just a, he gets into the right mindset of, okay, I'm at the 4th of July fireworks in this park and there's you know, what, four or 5,000 people here, however many there may be, um, and it's over, overflowed and kids are running up to us and they want to say hi. He knows he's in the mentality that, okay, this is just, you know, we're gonna be, I'm gonna have to get pet today and this is how it's gonna be. Um, to a certain extent, a lot of times where he'll just lay down and roll over. And he's like, all right, I know this is happening, so let's just let it happen. Well, I think it's, it's not only you've got the safety, you know, the, the business part of it, but they also um, make the communities gravitate towards that police dog. I mean, there's nothing nicer than a dog. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a magnet. And so these, um, the community always will go up to the canine officer 
way before they would go to a non-canine officer. They go right up there and, uh, and I think that brings the community and everybody together and as one and shows them that, you know, that handler is just the same person that you are. He gets up or she gets up from bed just like you do and uh, um, they're human too and they want to go home to their loved ones at the end of the day but they want to protect you during the day. So. They're good for the community. They're good. Everybody, almost everybody likes dogs. I can't say everybody, but I think even the people that are allergic to them and don't like them kind of respect them. So, I, you know, it's it bridges the gap between the police and the community. The dog occupies a space that's very unique, and especially in law enforcement. He is the extension of the officer in every, in many, many senses. And uh, I think that there's a desire not only on the part of police agencies, but I think there's a matching desire on the part of the public to see that dog and treat that dog as a law enforcement officer. And that's how the public wants to see that dog. You know, all the way from kids to grown adults, law enforcement, fire, medic, anyone, it doesn't matter. Um, there's a purpose for these, for these animals and what we do in canine. And whether it's to catch a bad guy or to rescue a kid that wandered away from home, um, these dogs are capable. And it, 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 the sky's the limit with these dogs. And just showing people, because I, I thought I had a pretty good grasp on canine even before I became a handler. Um, and I realized how much I didn't know. And I'm, I was in law enforcement for years before I became a handler. So it's amazing what you learn about these dogs. And like I said, going back to the academy and everything, it's very humbling to see what these dogs are capable of um, and what it brings just to, I mean, as simple as the, the morale in our police department. Yeah, I mean, when I bring them in the station at night, you know, guys are able to play with them, they're able to play. I mean, a dog, as they say, is a man's best friend. And when he comes in, it's just, you know, everybody wants to, they gravitate towards him. So if you're having a bad day, if you're at a bad scene or whatever, and you know, the dog happens to come in, you kind of forget about that for a minute and you get to play with them. You know, it's, it's not just to bridge the gap. It's not just a, a, a PR thing. It's not, um, you know, he's not just for photos. If he was, we wouldn't be doing all the training that we are. You know, he's, he needs to be depended on. It's really about public safety, and it's public safety where, where we all live. So it's within our schools, it's within our hospitals. So it's personal. I, I think the benefits of having a canine team are really, twofold, and I think they're equally important. I think the whole visual deterrent, the proactiveness of, of having a canine team there and the general public or the employees or the students, whatever the environment, know that, it's, that they're there. It, on one hand, it provides the deterrent from the exterior, people wanting to do evil or some nefarious act to, to their target. And on the other hand, it's from an interior perspective, it's, it's a source of uh, comfort that the employees, the students, the faculty, they feel comfort in knowing that the team, the K-9 team is there, kind of having their back on a proactive standpoint. So it really, the K-9 team really serves two purposes simultaneously, you know, one on the negative side and one on the positive side. I think, what, I think it's what a police agency wants. Um, proactive canine is a big deterrent. When, when we used to work canine in Detroit, the dog units were attached to the tactical mobile unit, and the tactical mobile unit was split into 10 car groups. Uh, there were two groups of 10 would work an east side precinct, and two groups of 10 would work a west side precinct. And there might be one or two dog cars attached to each one of those groups. And we would saturate a precinct for two or three days and then we'd move on to the next precinct. And the, the crime reduction in three days dropped. And when people saw dog cars rolling around, they knew. Uh, word of mouth got around. And we knew that from talking to, uh, to you know, confidential informants and other, and other people on the street. Um, that's something you can't put a price tag on. Um, I don't think you can put a price tag on getting called to a run 
on a four-year-old missing and tracking that missing down and finding it hiding in a garage two blocks away because it ran away from home. I don't think you could put a price tag on those things. How many times that somebody has wants to make a stink about getting pulled over and they come back to the car and all that barking makes them think what actions they were going to take and they change their mind. And we know it because we were experts in body language and we see the body language change. So I don't know how you put a price tag on those kind of things, you know. Law enforcement canines, as you know, they've been they've been out there for a long, long, long time. Started with the military, you know, long, long time. And you know, who would have thought, looking back into you know World War One, there would be dogs out there? They've been out there, and um, just you know, the military and law enforcement with the dogs, they do a lot of the, the same things. So, a police canine is just something. It's just a a tool we have that is part of us, just doing things that the human can't do. They have skill sets that our law enforcement officers don't have, abilities that they don't have that are very complementary. And so when you pair the two, you have a very powerful team. It gives you that much more confidence to do your job. Like, yeah, I've got all the guys and girls that I work with. I know they're willing to do whatever it takes to help me if, I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if, they, if I need them, but they're not always right there. He is. Like, and to have that, that feeling, knowing that, you know, he's going to do whatever it takes to help you, protect you, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. It makes you feel like you can do your job that much better. When you see some of these things come to fruition, you know, where you catch the bad guy or you find that piece of evidence that, you know, breaks open a, a case uh, and knowing that it was all for, you know, the dog, the dog did all that. Uh, to me, they're just, uh, they're an awesome tool, you know. They can be a force multiplier, sure. They can be a community relations tool, you know. Uh, people love seeing the dogs. I, they just bring so much more to the table that, you know, your regular human partner wouldn't bring. But again, I go back to, he's my partner. But you know what I like the most is on traffic stops. To me, it's the greatest deterrent for me to walk up to a car because that dog is barking his head off. So anything that somebody might be thinking like, oh, I'm gonna take this officer or, you know, something that they might be hesitant on, they're gonna hear him barking and they'll be like, yeah, I don't want any part of that. Now he's a super friendly dog, right? They don't know the difference. So to me, his deterrence on that can be a lifesaver. I have a live, living, breathing partner, but a tool that can save, that's there to save us and to protect us so that we go home. Not just me, all my brothers and sisters in law enforcement that are out on the street with me, they go home. They put themselves in harm's way for us. And I think, well, I say, well, they don't know they're doing it. I think they do. I think they're, they're like natural born protectors. He's, he's there to help you, you know? And he will do his job, no matter what, every single day, and sacrifice himself for you. So, how many people would do that for you? How many people have that, uh, have that innate ability to say, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm gonna be by that guy, that guy's side no matter what. I would say a canine can teach you a lot of things about hardworking, loyalty, and not judging something or someone else. Uh, canine is always happy to see you. When you're going to work, they want to jump in the car and they want to go. When you're out of work, they want to be there with you too. It's, it's that one family member, and they are family members, who never lets you down, who's always excited to see you, who loves you no matter what. And most importantly, they're never upset with you. Um, they look at us as the as a leader of the pack, and they respect us. And especially if we're fair, um, they respect us even more. But I don't see a dog offers you unconditional loyalty, offers you unconditional quote unquote love, and we as human beings don't normally have that. 
And so when we do have that association with an animal, um, it, it's something that if we didn't have it, I don't know where we would be. I really don't know where we would be. And it doesn't apply to everybody, but to a majority of people it does. There's a lot of people here that if you told them they couldn't have pets anymore, they'd, they'd be going crazy. What's that? What? What is that? I don't know. I really don't know. But I sure wouldn't want to be with without my dogs. I just really wouldn't. I'd uh, have a hole in my heart, I think. The bond that we have with our dogs, it takes time to build it, but the bond we have is undescribable. They know our mannerisms, our body language, you know, before we even know we're doing something, they pick up on that stuff. And then the more you know your dog, you pick up on their body language. And so there's a nonverbal communication that we have with these animals that no one else has. These canine partners, and I've been lucky to handle over 15 dogs operationally in my career. And each one of them, I remember every little quirk about each one of them. Some of them saved my lives. Many of them saved many people's lives. And for that reason, I just think that it's it's the one profession that nobody can take away from you. Once, once you earn that title, it's your title and you try to hang on to it as long as you can. You know, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's unlike any other position or any other task I've had as an, as an officer. It's a, it's a completely different realm. Um, it's challenging and it's frustrating sometimes and it's an awesome feeling others and it's just, it's unlike anything else. Um, I just feel it's a call that I like doing. Um, and to find a person's loved one is the best gratifying thing that you could ever have. That that individual could be in some serious trouble standing in the middle of the woods. So that, to me, that's how uh, you've helped somebody that day. It is a lot of work, but there's a lot of positives to it. You find that one person that's missing. You find that one person that has stuff in their car that they shouldn't have, that you may potentially save somebody else's life. You know, whether it's the heroin, fentanyl, coke, whatever it is, you may have possibly saved a life. That to me is the most rewarding part and is worth all of that extra work, all of that extra dedication, just to have those few things that go so right for you. It's like that first, that first drug find you get with that dog, or that first live find of the individual that ran from you, or the missing child that walked away and, you know, everybody's giving you all the, you know, find all of a sudden you find, it's like, yeah, you know, and that dog's just looking at you and it's like, it, it just, you can't get any more. It, it's a job where you can go to, go to work with your pet <laughs> every day. That's the most rewarding thing you can do. Gratifying man, you know, he finds that gun from an armed robbery that the guy ditched out a car window on the side of the uh, road or in the bushes. Um, it, it, it's an incredible feeling. And it's just, you know, you're proud of your dog uh, more than you're proud of yourself. I love canine work, yeah. It's the best thing I've done in my police career. I've been fortunate enough to uh, work road patrol. I went in the detective bureau. Um, I'm an evidence technician, uh, all that, canine tops it all. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Being canine is something you can't explain. It's uh, the bond you have with the dog. It's never had anything like it before, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs>